Well, let me ask you this question this morning before I start. How many of you actually realize that you are in a spiritual conflict? Let me see your hands. You know you're in a spiritual conflict. Yeah. The church, whether we want to believe it or not, is in a continual state of war. And sometimes we can get disillusioned because we don't understand that when you read every book of this Bible from Genesis to Revelation that war is something that is prevalent theme throughout the Bible of people that have to overcome incredible obstacles because we face an incredible enemy. And when you look at what's happening in the world today, it's not Republican against Democrat or Democrat against Independent. What you see in the earth is the kingdom of God clashing with the forces of darkness. And you have to really be aware of what's taking place or you'll be deceived into thinking that it's something else when really these things are going to get more and more volatile in the days ahead because the enemy knows his time is short. And a lot of times we as the church get the mindset because Jesus came into this world as a lamb that was led before his shearers to the slaughter that did not defend himself, did not say a word, but willingly submitted his life in order to redeem those of us that were lost to eternal darkness in order for us to be part of the kingdom of God. We think that Jesus is still operating that same way as a lamb when in fact he is coming back as a roaring lion. Matter of fact, he's coming back as a man of war because when I read in the book of Revelations, when he comes back, he's going to be bloodied. In other words, blood's going to be all over him as he fights for the people of Israel in a war called Armageddon in the Middle East. So Jesus is someone who is interested in conquering all those that have tried to conquer his people. Now, while I'm glad I wasn't born in the Old Testament dispensation of time because there they did fight with spears and swords and basically that's how God operated through militant people, we must understand that even though we've come through the door of grace, that the battle still wages, it just battles in a different level and it is now a spiritual battle versus a physical battle. So you have to have your eyes open to that today and that's what I hope to show you from the Word of God because... In 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9, Peter said this. He said, be sober. That means be alert or be awake. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And then he said, resist him steadfast in the faith. In other words, Satan is not a lion, but he roars like one. He sounds like one, and he creates images in front of you that will make you think that you're about to be devoured. So we have an enemy who desires to destroy individuals because his ultimate goal is destroying the church. But remember what Jesus said. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It does not mean that the gates of hell is pushing the church backwards. It means that the church should be advancing, and as we advance, the gates of hell is trying to hinder and stop the plans of God or local churches in our communities from fulfilling their mandate and their mission. But God said, even though the gates of hell comes against us, they will not prevail because we still are going to advance regardless of what the enemy brings. I believe there is a people that God is raising up in this hour that have an internal, what we call internal gut system that says, you may push me back, you may knock me down, you may throw me around a little bit, but when it's all over, I'm going to dust myself off and I'm going to keep on pushing on. 